little pro tip from Tim. Every time I get a new jacket or something that has these strings for the hood, I pull it out. Oh, what? <laughs> I think it's sewing in. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, get rid of it because the last thing you want is these guys dangling down here and get caught in something that's spinning like 11,000 RPM and pull you into it. That is no fun. No way. Okay, welcome back to another Tool Time with Tim. Today, we get to make, oh, one of my most favorite tools to use under the power hammer, the round back flatter. The thing is a blast to use. It introduces all the flexibility that you have at the anvil with your hand hammer, but under the power hammer, so it's like twice as twice as good for sure. It's a really rudimentary tool. You don't have to do, like in a sense that's very robust and strong. It's easy to make. You get a whole assortment of them in different variations, different radiuses, different things. I'll kind of show you a little bit of what that looks like. If you have a power hammer, you need this tool. So basically what the flatter is, is it allows you to do those tapered blows that you do with your hand hammer at the anvil. I know as soon as I got my power hammer, boom, I can do anything now. I'm indestructible. Power hammer, let's forge it. But then suddenly you realize, ah, I can't do this tapered blow or I can't do a half step like I did on the anvil. So you're kind of slowed down. But with this one tool, you can basically reintroduce how you would shape things at the anvil with your hand hammer but under the power hammer. So it's really, really sweet. Okay, so let's talk about handles. You've got a couple different options. From, as far as I can tell, the traditional way is you drill a hole in the side of your to be flatter, and then you take a bar that's the same size as the hole, or the hole is slightly smaller, and you take a groove, you, you forge a groove, or chisel a groove, or grind a groove on the end of the round bar, and then you heat the flatter up, and you drive the bar into the hole so it's set in, and then you take a curved punch and you chisel around the handle and you push the material into that groove and then it sets the handle. So I've done that on a couple of my tools and I've had really great results in the sense that even though the handle, it actually becomes loose, but it doesn't come off because of the groove. And so because of that looseness, it's really great for vibrations because you don't get any vibrations and you can actually angle your handle. So that's really sweet, that's the pro of it. The con of it is, though is if you have to control your angle or if your flatter is too big and it hangs over, you can't, you can't control it very good because your handle's loose. So great application if it's a big chunk of steel and you just gotta flatten it out, boom, really sweet, really nice. The other option is to take just a round bar, quite thin, just bend it 90 degrees, and the reason you bend it 90 degrees is so that when you weld it on with your arc welder, you just get more surface than just doing like a straight weld on. It's not as good, it'll pretty much just break off, guaranteed. Now the pro of that is it's really quick. Again, vibrations aren't so bad with that thin bar because it's so thin, it just takes it and it gets bent, you just straighten it up or you can, you can angle it. So I, I kind of actually like that, that method. It's pretty sweet, it's really fast. So I'll leave it up to you for your decision, but you can go both ways. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, grab your favorite hammer and hit that like button. And if you would, grab an even bigger hammer and hit that subscriber button. We will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.